Today I think I fancy looking at another Link Ray track. And I think I said this in my last Link Ray video, but this is the kind of music that I like to come back to from time to time, just to remind myself what playing the electric guitar is all about. And it's raw, it's primitive, it's lots of fun. And it's certainly not about chops or having amazing tone or any of that boring stuff. So let me begin by playing through the track. I think I'm gonna play the entire track for you and then I'll break it down. go such a great track this one and I don't want to overstate the primitive nature of Link Ray's playing because actually there's some quite interesting and pretty sophisticated stuff happening in this particular track which I'm going to get into in just a moment. Now as far as this particular track goes I think it was recorded between 1958 and 1960 there's an album called the Epic Sessions 58 to 60 on which this track appears but it's actually quite hard to find definite information about the recording dates and locations of particular Link Ray songs. I think someone probably needs to write a decent Link Ray book. I don't know if one already exists but I'd certainly buy it if there was one out there. Anyway let's get into this track and I'm going to break it down for you section by section. We're in the key of E for this one and the whole track is based around the 1-4-5 chords in that key so E, A and B or B7 but it's not a 12 bar blues. I think we've got a 16 bar form in this one. So let's begin with the opening riff, which is quite straightforward. That goes like this. So this is a very common rock and roll kind of a riff just played on the lowest two strings. This is outlining the sound of the E chord, the one chord. Uh, I suppose it's kind of a bass line thing that we've got here. So we've got the root note, which is the open low E string, then the third, which is the fourth fret on the low E string, that's a G sharp, just slide into that. And then this is the fifth, which is a B, second fret on the A string. And then I'm hammering on to the fourth fret to a C sharp, that's kind of the sixth. So it's giving you that kind of sound. So E, slide into the G sharp, B, hammering on to the C sharp. And I think we're playing that eight or so times. Then we're going to the five chord and we're just taking that riff to the five chord. So we've got a B root note now, second fret on the A string, and then sliding up to the sixth fret, over onto the D string, and a four to six hammer on, so exactly the same idea transposed. And then we're 
back to the one chord again and Link Ray is now changing his approach and we've got this really nice part based on thirds played on the third and fourth strings so we've got this kind of idea <laughs> beautiful little part this one I think so we're starting with this double stop this pair of notes it's six on the D and four on the G and there are quite a lot of slides in here so I think I'm just picking it straight the first time and then I'm sliding into the same shape and then taking that same shape down two frets and then back up again again this is outlining the sound of the one chord so you can see these two notes as being the, the third and the fifth of that chord. You could relate it to this C form E chord if you want to. And you can hear some open strings here as well, which is really nice touch, I think. So in between these thirds, we've got just the open top couple of strings. And then we've got gone to the four chord here which is an A and we're playing these two notes here the root and the third and then we're flattening the third so we've got that really nice four major to four minor kind of sound that sort of Beatlesque sound though I guess this was probably before the Beatles so that's a bit of a, an anachronistic uh, thing to say but um, we're then continuing like this more thirds on the third and fourth strings so to start with we're up here 14 and 13 moving that same shape lower and then down to our original pair of notes sliding that up some more open strings and then back again so really pretty part I suppose here we're outlining the sound of the one chord Five and then one, four, one. So that's especially pretty, that part there. It's giving you that kind of A over B sound. The bass line is centered around that B note there. So and then so as I said, more sophisticated than you might think, this particular track. I'm going to call that the A section. Let me put all of that together for you. Then that goes round again. We've got another A section played more or less exactly the same. And then we've got a bit of a guitar solo. So. so we're starting off with some licks played in the 12th position. We're back to the one chord here, and this is all played around that one chord shape. So we're starting with this kind of E triad shape. So frets 13, 12, and 12. And then with the third finger, I'm just pressing down 14 and 14 on the, the B and the G strings. So that's the basic idea we've got there. And there are just some little fills and embellishments as well. So, so hitting that kind of rock and roll, rockabilly double stop there at 14 and 15. little bend there as well, 14 on the B. And then we're coming down to the five chord. So you can think about this B shape here and we've got this kind of major to minor sound that I'm hearing there. So seventh fret uh, on the top three strings and then bringing down the eighth fret on the third string. So B minor to B major, that very bluesy sound. And we continue like this. So 
So more of this shape here. So seven and five on the top three strings. And then we're coming to an open A chord. So maybe just sliding into that as well. Little embellishment by holding down the third fret on the top string. This section of the tune ends in the same way as the main A section with some more of these double stop thirds. So it's an interesting part of this and I may as well just go through it and relate what's happening here to the overall harmony which is kind of a combination of what's going on on the guitar and what's implied by the bass line. So all of this stuff all outlining the sound of the one chord and there we're heading to the five chord. Next bit is interesting, we've got this shape, it's played over an E bass note so it's giving you that kind of E dominant or E9 sound so I'm hearing it as something like that so E9 to D9, the, the bass isn't quite fitting in with what's happening there but we've got and then we're heading to the four chord here and then as before we've got the one five one sound so if I put all of that solo together it sounds like this So that's pretty much it as far as the main guitar parts go and each of those sections is repeated two or three times and you can listen to the original recording if you want to piece together the exact arrangement. And the only other thing worth talking about I think is the sax solo and what I did in my little playthrough at the start was try and play some of those sax type ideas on the guitar. I wasn't playing the sax solos exactly but just giving you a vague kind of guitar-y impression of what the sax was doing. So I think I was doing something like this. So for the first sax solo I played something like this. So I'm just playing some low kind of twangy notes. We've got B, C sharp and then there's our E root note. This is all giving you the sound of the one chord. So maybe sliding up a bit higher. Then for the remainder of the sax solo I actually went back to the guitar part, so the... And then for the second sax solo I decided to go up higher, so... So very simple, just playing an E at the fifth fret on the second string and an open E string. just reaching up for that G note there, maybe giving that a bit of a bend, really just playing around with those two notes. And then heading to the five chord, I'm just bending up into a B note. And then heading back to those same thirds. So that's about it. It's a super cool track, lots of fun to play. And with something like this, you don't need to play too precisely. You don't need to take what I'm teaching you here as how you must play it. So learn the basic idea behind these parts and then play it with a bit of attitude and a bit of commitment and it's going to sound good. Let me talk you through the gear that I'm using today. Uh, I decided to use my Telecaster for this one, just seemed to work for this track. This is a 52 reissue Telecaster and I'm plugged into my Fender Deluxe. So for the little playthrough that I did at the start of this video, it was guitar going into a quite loud Fender Deluxe which was mic'd up and for the teaching stuff I was actually going through my Kemper profiler and a Fender Deluxe profile that I've got in there it's just because this amp is quite hissy and noisy it just gets a little bit annoying if I'm trying to talk over the top of all of that so I switched to the Kemper for the teaching stuff. I'm using a couple of pedals today and the amp is running quite clean and all the overdrive is coming from the small speaker overdrive from Great Eastern Effects 
and I've spoken about this pedal before it's an awesome sounding overdrive the idea behind it is it gives you that kind of small amp in the studio kind of sound that a lot of great players from the 60s and 70s use and it certainly gets you that it's a really focused kind of sound got a great mid-range and it really kind of cuts through the high end is cutting without being harsh so it's highly recommended that pedal I've been using it quite a lot and I'm using some delay as well I can hear a little bit of slap back delay on the link ray recording so for that I've got my MXR carbon copy there we have it as ever I will be tabbing this out and that's going to be up on my patreon page so check that out should you wish and I have now done several Link Ray songs. So if you want to watch some more Link Ray tutorials, then uh, do a search on my channel and you should be able to find those. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you next time.